Um, Miles? Charlie? Guess what, buddy? We're back. It's your favorite time of the year. Spooky season. Halloween. Now, I know a few episodes back, I jumped the gun. I asked you what you were going to be for Halloween. You're like, it's too early for this. And you were right. But now, I'm wondering if in the past few weeks, you've sort of softened up on the Halloween costumes. I'm wondering if you and Anne have a nice little couple's costume idea. Yes, I do, actually. What is it? Um, We are going to go as farts. As farts? Yeah, there was a kid that went as a fart for Halloween. Let me see what that looks like. I'll show you. It's loading. Loading this fart. Wow. That looks like a fart. (laughs) (laughs) So basically the mom. Show the camera. Oh, you'll blow it up. Uh, So basically this kid, it looks like he's just wearing a giant like loofah. You know, the thing in the shower. No. Right, I'm saying that. Yeah, it's oh like the, the little squ- uh, the little. It looks like that. I didn't know that was called a loofah, dude. Yeah, so it looks like you're just wearing a giant loofah that's got brown, green, and tan colors in it, and the icing on the cake is he's got a uh, like a megaphone. Yeah, <laughs> I that see I'm that. guessing has fart noises little, on or it, or yeah. just right up to his his face. Yeah. Um, you should be a Taco Bell fart and put a little orange in there. Okay. Um. Miles, that's super cool. Hey, now this actually raised another question. Two questions. First of all, do you use a loofah? No, I do not. Does Ann? There's a lot of talk that those things are actually not very hygienic. Loofahs? Yeah. Why? Because it just keeps collecting germs and it never really gets... You you can Google it. I'm not an expert on loofahs. You got to clean your loofah. Yeah, but they say, like, if you were to take an old one and cut it open, it's actually kind of disgusting. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's why I use my hands. Um, that's so why you use it as a fart for There you Halloween. go. Yeah. Is Anne on board with this idea? I think she's the one that sent me that, so I think so. Is You know you found the right gal when she's sending you memes about dressing up as farts for Halloween, you know, Charlie? Are you going to sex it up? Or are you going to be a sexy fart? Or I, just might, like I might. Like a poop. Yeah, maybe show a little nip. There you go. Do a little nip slip in the fart costume. Put maybe, a little maybe a deep V fart costume for Halloween. Yeah, I like that. A little taco meat. Yeah. Put a little taco meat on that fart. <laughs> Put a little nip on that fart. Mm-hmm. I'm what are a, you going to do for Halloween? Have you figured it out? Though? I'm still thinking, Miles. What's something for Halloween, even if it's, like, too elaborate that you probably won't ever do it, what's something you've always wanted to be for Halloween that you've never done? Always wanted to be? I've always wanted to be a Green Bay Packer. I wanted the shoulder pads and the real authentic helmet and the knee pads and the pants and the socks. I'm going to be honest, Charlie. That seems more attainable than ever considering that you know people at the Packers. I know. Maybe I should make a call. Yeah. That's a really good idea. You want an authentic uniform. What number are you going for? Well, my number was 84 went back in my heyday. Mm-hmm. So I there would you go. think 84. Is there anyone 84 right now that plays? Um. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um. Hang on. Who is 84? Now I'm drawing a blank. Um. It, it, actually, back in the day, I'll tell you this much. Um, back in the day, my favorite 80, now Randy Moss was, uh, 84 on the Vikings, Yep. um, which was not like what I wanted, but, um, back in the day, my favorite, my favorite Packer to ever wear the number 84 was Sterling Sharp. Oh yeah. And Sterling Sharp, I watched his last game. He went out and he got this pass, and I think they were playing the Buccaneers or the Suckaneers, I called them, from that day forward. They tackled him bad, and then he was done. Mm, Sucked. was a sad ending. So Tyler uh, Davis is number 84. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot, I should have known that. Good so Lord. So, yeah, you can get your Tyler Davis uniform on. That'd be cool. But I want my uniform to say Barons. Okay. Well, Tyler Davis wears 84, so pick a different number. I want a custom one. I'm yeah. sure we can get that done for you. Maybe. That was my dream, Miles. I wanted to be a Green Bay Packer. Anyway, folks, we got a good episode for you. <laughs> yeah, we'll take some callers. Um, you all right? 
No, I was just getting emotional for the camera comedically, and then... Uh, oh, yeah, I mean, that was never going to happen, Charlie. Yeah. Your parents didn't let you know that at pretty, pretty early on? They did. They said, you can't catch that good, and you're kind of slow. But I was really <laughs> fast for a while, though, Miles. Yeah, Some, somewhere well, along the ways, I lost it. Weren't we all? <laughs> weren't yeah. we all? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Char- Charlie, should we take some callers? I don't know why we wouldn't, Miles. <laughs> Folks, Halloween is almost here. And what is the scariest part of Halloween? Not the goblins, not the goobers, not the werewolves, not the vampires, not the creepy crawlies, the squeezels, the things that lurk and linger in the night. Miles, what is the scariest thing about Halloween? An empty glass of tippy cow, Charlie. Doom. I can't think of anything scarier than that. Not all the ghouls in all the land. The scariest thing you could ever have is an empty bottle of tippy cow. I ran out of breath on that sound effect, but yeah, you I timed agree. It right. Scary as heck. Don't Let this be too scary of a Halloween for you. Get yourself stocked up on a bottle of Tippy Cow. And if you find a trick-or-treater that's over 21, nope, can't put that in there. Anyway, folks. If you find yourself not having any trick-or-treaters, it's okay. Just tip on back a glass of Tippy Cow and enjoy your nice Halloween. Mm Mm-hmm. Tip it on back, Tippy Cow. Welcome to the, the Bellied Up Podcast. Who do we got on the line? Hello, you got Casey in Omaha, Nebraska. Casey from Omaha, Nebraska. What's going on today? Oh, just another work day, gentlemen. Where are we working at? I work at a news station downtown. Oh, what are you doing? I was in the news biz for a while. What's your job? I am a marketing consultant, and actually, I work with somebody that worked with you down in Texas. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. Who'd yes. you work with? <laughs> uh, a guy by the name of Jeff. I'm not sure if you want to bleep out the last name or not. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Waterlow. Oh, no kidding. Tell Jeff I says hi. Yeah, How's he doing? Will do. He's doing well. He uh, moved up here uh, about a year ago now, I think. Oh, real good. What does he have to say about Charlie? Well, he doesn't. I don't think that they hung out that much, but I will say that he thinks that you're really funny, and we bonded over that. He actually caught me listening to your guys' podcast. (laughs) Oh, nice. And he says, I remember that guy. He got relieved of his job (laughs) at the station I worked at. Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) That's exactly what he said. So, uh, well, no, 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 no. Do tell Jeff if I says hi. That's a nice little blast from the past. Um, What's on your mind? What's on your mind, Casey? Well, me and my fiance are starting to look at houses. Okay. Now, there are certain things that I'm not willing to give up, and we started talking about, you know, well, I mean, what do, what do you want in a house? And, you know, I need a garage. Yeah. Need a garage, especially for those golf ball-sized hail. Hell, yeah. And uh, we got into the topic of grass, and she started talking about, oh, well, there are better, you know, more environmentally friendly options for the front yard. And I, I put my foot down on the regular grass. You, do, you put and, it right down on that grass? put it right down on the grass and i said there's i'm not compromising on that okay. so then we started getting in an argument and such about that and i realized i don't really have that many good arguments for it besides i want it <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay i i know exactly what you're talking about um i've had the and i get it i get that um, maybe a front yard full of natural flowers and clover and all of that stuff may be um, a little more environmentally friendly. But I will have to say, have you ever stood on your front porch and looked out at a magical 
perfectly groomed, striped lawn before. There's just you just can't beat that feeling. You can't beat the smell of fresh cut grass. You just can't beat being the game of lawns champion in your neighborhood and having bragging <laughs> rights for an entire winter. You just can't beat all of that. I understand the other implications with it, but you can't beat that feeling. You know what? Well, and I, I no, sorry, go, go ahead. No, you go ahead after you, I insist. Well, I, I grew up with my father being quite religious about his lawn care. And he was the guy known on the block for having the best lawn. And I feel like I have to, it is my responsibility to carry it down the bloodline. (laughs) Yeah, you have a duty as the son to ensure that that legacy lives on. Casey, (laughs) Casey, I hear you. Miles, I hear you. But I'm on your fiance's side and I got a few reasons why. Obviously, you got your oh envi- you got your environmental impacts. I want to set those aside for a second and look at the history of lawns. Do you know where we get lawns from? We got them. The earth. F- we know we got them from the British. We did not have any lawns oh over here, and they were a p- holdover from the British. And you know why the Brits used lawns? It was a status symbol. It was a way to add inches to your bratwurst. Exactly. Yeah, but no, <laughs> that's exactly we, right. Charlie. We did not you n- nail on the head. We that's did ex- not fight. You need to show that you have the best lawn in the neighborhood. That's we, what it's all about. It, you're <laughs> over. <laughs> you're overcompensating is what you're doing. We did not fight the British in the Revolutionary War to take their dumbass lawns. Okay, I tell you that. <laughs> and listen. I got a lot of animosity to these stupid lawns because I grew up, one of my first jobs, I was a, a lawn guy, okay? And I I had a lot of lawns on the block, and I always got guff for leaving the grass clippings on and, and cutting in circles, and none of it freaking matters, okay? Put yourself some clover. That stuff don't grow. You barely have to cut it. Who cares about the lines? Also, <laughs> I mean, you can grow food on that same deal and then you think about this you got to pay for the fertilizers pay for the chemicals you know what like for what for dandelions you're trading free flowers on your lawn for you know cancer chemicals in in your water you know all right (laughs) that's my thought right there casey it's time to break the deal okay we're not trying to be uh you know the british We fought a war, so we didn't have to be. Get rid of the lawn. That's what I say. Okay, Charlie. That being said, you have hobbies, right? I got hobbies. What if someone told you that bird watching was dumb and the British used to bird wash and we fought a war (laughs) so we wouldn't have to bird watch anymore? How would you feel about that? But we didn't, Miles. You don't know that. You cannot say that they didn't bird watch. Miles, everybody's looking at birds, okay? Every single person that's smart is looking at them birdies. Because the birds know. The bird you think hey, hey, speaking of birds, you think the birds got a little lawn outside their nest? Huh? Yeah, my lawn. (laughs) I'm just saying Exactly. Exactly. It's so much easier. (laughs) So much easier not to But you're missing the point. The The point point is, is is he wants something to be able to care about and do in his free time. He enjoys manicuring a lawn and striping it and all of that. Listen, you know what, Casey? If you like it, if you like it, go on. Do it. There is room, I think, for people who like to do their lawn to do their lawn. But if you're just doing it because everyone else is doing it, you don't have to do that. And I just gave you a good argument for not doing it. What, I'm just what here. What about his family legacy, Charlie? You haven't even talked about his family legacy. Just imagine. <laughs> do you want on? Do you want him to someday, hopefully far in the future, he perishes, he goes in the ground, there's a headstone here, and it says, here lies the guy who did not carry out his family legacy. Do you want him to go to eternity with that on his headstone? <laughs> He's just got weeds all over his headstone. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> I'm yeah. fine with it. What if, Casey, have you ever talked to your dad about why he did the lawn the way he did? Maybe he was just doing it because he thought he had to. And, he, you know, maybe you could tell him. It's just a holdover from the freaking funny teeth Brits, you know. And then uh, he'll, he'll finally let go of that urge to manicure a lawn. For what? For who? 
If it's not well, for you, I'm, Casey. I'm pretty confident. I know why he manicured the lawn, and that is to get away from yep. – my myself and my little sister and my mom. He'd go. I'm gonna go mow the lawn exactly. and leave. Exactly. Well, if that's the reason, there's a lot of other stuff you can do in the lawn that takes more time than mowing it. Like I mean, what, Charlie? Like what? Well, you can get yourself a nice little garden, like I said, or you can put like some native plants in there. You can get a nice tree going. You know, you can climb the tree and say, "I'm just trimming the branches," but you're not. So here's my question. <laughs> Another one followed up, Charlie. Yeah. What are the neighbors going to think? Because just because you think that having all of these weeds and natural flowers and this and that, you see it as a mating ground for all sorts of wildlife. Bees. Your neighbors may look at it and see that it maybe looks a little trashy. Well, if the neighbors like logic, you can put it to them like this. If I know anything about neighbors, they're not great with logic. Do you like food? <laughs> if the, the Do you guys like food? Miles, Casey, you guys like food? Yes, Charlie. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, in order to have food, you know, think about our farmers. Our farmers need bees. Bees are the natural pollinator, the cheapest pollinator we have. You know what kills the bees? Lawns. Because you've got this monoculture of this pesticide cocktail thing. It's killing the bees. And we need the bees. Re look it up. That's a big thing. We are killing the bees for these dumbass lawns. And then, therefore, we need to buy more bees, import them. A lot of them are dying anyway. We need the bees. We need the lawns. We need the birds. Charlie, and to that I say... As our boy William Joel once said, mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we didn't start the fire. <laughs> okay. It's been always burning. Since the, world Since the world's been turning. So I why not fan the flames, Miles? That's what you're saying. Yeah. You're just you're fanning the flames. Yeah. Him not having him having a natural lawn out front is not going to change everyone else. There's nothing natural about. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, if he were, if his wife were to get her way on this, sure it do. Who else? That's just not going to change. Well, that's one opinion, Miles. The other opinion is Casey. You could start a revolution down there, you know. And, and one person sees it and goes, "Oh, I really like them flowering things." Oh my gosh, he's got tomatoes right in his lawn. He doesn't have to go to the grocery store. Just bring them tomatoes right in. He's got sunflowers. That's a freaking cool. Yard. <laughs> He's going to plant sunflowers. Sunflowers. Well, yeah, dude. Sunflowers <laughs> are great. Are you kidding me? They, you know, they're a great equalizer in your garden. They you know suck what, the toxins. You know out. what's going to happen, anyways? You, you live in Omaha, right? Yes, sir. Good Midwestern city. Good Midwestern neighbors. Someone's going to see this this uh, natural lawn that you guys put in. And they're going to be like, oh, his mower must be broken. And then he's going to come over and just <laughs> mow it all down anyways. <laughs> that probably will happen. Yeah. But, no, I mean, you just, you, you know what you do? You put a big sign up there and says, I'm not lazy. Uh, this is a. Uh, uh, my wife, <laughs> my wife was just withholding sex. So here we are. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I think you well, just. I've you, been thinking. Yeah. Either. Either way, I'm gonna have a garden in the back. So well, that's good. That's that good. already that that already takes care of that because I'm definitely gonna be growing some fruits and veggies and all that. But I just need that nice front lawn, and I'm I'm putting my foot down on it. <laughs> Can you compromise on that, Charlie? Maybe do what you're talking in the back and I mean, then nice up front. You know, uh, like uh, look, I'm just I'm saying if you want your lawn, what am I gonna do? Tell you no. I'm not yeah, saying you have been this whole time. No, I'm giving you another option. I'm saying we don't have to be like the British's bitch with these lawns. OK, I'm just saying it, it's, you know, to me, when I see a, a big lawn, I'm going to be honest with you. I see the same thing that I see when, the, you know, a, 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 a Honda goes rolling down the road with no muffler on. <laughs> You know, it's like, what are you trying to prove? You know, it's like when if you're trying to say that guys who have nice lawns have small peckers. Well, I, yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, what else are we supposed to do? I mean, I don't get like. <laughs> well, uh, now, can I can I tell you Let's this? Call a spade a spade here. I and mean, there's what else? Look, what else are we supposed to do? I tell you what else you're supposed to do. You're trying to add inches to it. So 
grow a phallic symbol. You know, lawns are not phallic symbols. You keep cutting them down to, to shrinkage. You know, what you want to do is get get yourself a nice deal of uh, sunflowers in there. Corn you can even do. Uh, you get get yourself a three tier system. You get uh, well. Then you, if you put corn and sunflowers in there, then you got problems with the city because it's not zoned as egg land. But Charlie, that's what, no, it, it doesn't have to be zoned. And these zoning laws are bullshit. <laughs> and who makes the zoning laws up? <laughs> it, it, no, I remember we had a trailer in our yard, and some jerk off over at the uh, city like called and said, "You can't have a trailer in your yard." The hell are you talking about? You can't have a trailer in your yard, dude. How am I supposed to move this crap? You know, you got to be able to have a trailer in your yard. You got to be able to have have something that actually makes sense in your yard. Have some food in there. Have okay. some okay. trees. I understand, Charlie. I want you to paint a picture for the listeners what your front lawn looks like. My front lawn is uh, just whatever grew there. Mm. I don't put anything on it. It's, it's would, would you say that there is grass out front? There is. And there. how many sunflowers and corn do you have out front of your house? None out front. You have sunflowers and corn in the back? Uh, no. Mm. Okay. Well, what? this might be a practice what you preach here. No, fella. no, 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 no. Back it up, though, <laughs> Miles. What what I have is a low-maintenance lawn. It, it gets mowed probably, I would say, three to four times a summer because it honestly we didn't get a we don't get a lot of water really and it's just not it's a very small lump first of all it's like a little patch so no i haven't done that i i don't enjoy working in my yard mm. but if i did i mm. do something like that but the lawn but is very saying, low maintenance yeah you're there's, saying that your version is low maintenance though i am because there's it's like clover there's weeds all over the place it is what it is what mm. grows there grows there i think it, you can also do that to a very low maintenance yard mm. you know where you just don't do anything to it I don't. I, I have no problem with just hmm. lawn, just grass sitting there. Hmm. I just have a problem with like you know. Hmm. I wouldn't ever fertilize it because who gives a shit? Hmm. And also, all that phosphorus just runs off into the waterways, hmm. you know. And then you get this blue green algae, hmm. you know. So yeah, that's another option. There are many options. You don't have to go the full native plants, mm -hmm. whatever. Hmm. Um, but yeah. Hmm. Oh, okay. Miles doesn't buy this. What's wrong with that, Miles? I'm just saying, there's a lot of talk <laughs> bashing the lawn when you got one sitting out right in front of your door. I got a low maintenance lawn. There's no problems with low maintenance lawn. Neglecting the lawn doesn't make it low maintenance. It Charlie. actually does. <laughs> it very much so does. <laughs> Neglect your lawns. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I own the house, you know, and you own your house, and you can do whatever you want with it. I'm just trying to give people alternatives to, you know. I think the last thing I'll say is. I would just, if you're, you know, still a deadlock in the conversation with your wife, just say, okay, we can put in the low maintenance lawn for you, but then I'm going to be spending a lot more time inside bothering you the whole day. So uh, which one do you want? She's going she's gonna to buy him a lawnmower. She's going to yeah, buy him one that's of them what I'm saying. line <laughs> lawnmowers. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, there's a there's there's one way that people can stay married, Charlie, and uh -huh. that's doing yard work. <laughs> OK, well, so I, I agree a, with you on that a couples therapy. If I've ever heard one, I agree with you on that, Miles. There's just there's a lot that, that you can do out there in the yard that I'm just saying, if you don't like lawns, don't feel like you got to go full and go full bore. And if you like that, hell, Fair enough. who am I to judge, you know? Who am I to judge? I'm so, just trying so to offer think? alternatives. What do you think? Do you think Charlie's got a case? Yeah. I've, 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 I would say there there are some good arguments on both sides, but I think that I'd rather have a British flag on my front lawn with a nice, with a nice lawn. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my. my Signed, Atlanta. sealed, and delivered. All right, you fellas. Well, you, you heard it out, Casey. We appreciate you just uh, bearing with us. And good luck to you guys. When are you getting married? Oh, we don't know yet. Further down the road. Further down the road. All right. They got to resolve this lawn issue first. <laughs> they gotta, yeah. yeah, yeah. We got to see how that works out first. Well, en <laughs> enjoy the engagement, my man. That's It's very exciting for the both of you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. We talk soon now. Have a good day, gentlemen. You too. Bye-bye. Yeah.
Charlie, I'm going to be honest. Yeah. If you are a speech teacher at a high school or college, yeah, they should just take that segment and play it for the class and go, this is how you debate in 2023. Right. We were fair to each other. We were. We both brought up great points. We did. The guy even said he could see your side of it, even though when he started, he had no idea. Yeah. And I won. So. <laughs> So, <laughs> but just think, Charlie, if more people were having debates like we just had. Just rational conversations. Rational conversations. And you know? still cheers at the end of it. No yeah. one gets too worked up. And you don't make it, it too emotional. World be a better place, Charlie. It would be. Let's solve another problem, shall we? Yep. Welcome to the Belly Up Podcast. Who we got on the horn? Is it Amber? Amber, where are you at? Uh, West Texas. Okay. I heard you got some tough weather out in West Texas. Does that hold up true? It is very dry. I actually grew up in the Midwest, so it was quite a change moving out here. The wind blows all the time, and it's, like, so flipping hot all the time. Yeah. Why'd you move? Um, my job. I moved here for my job. What do you do? Um, I do research in cotton. Oh. So I used to I used to do work in soybeans, and then just got bored in soybeans, so I decided to come work in cotton. Switch teams to cotton. That way, Amber. Nice. Well, why don't you belly up to the bar with us? Tell us what's going on. So, our Son, our oldest son started kindergarten this year and he is quite the handful and I actually told him that if he could keep out of the principal's office within the first month of school I'd give him a hundred dollars <sighs> and he's gotten pretty darn close to going several times and the months up he hasn't gone, but it hasn't been a great ride getting there. Like, he almost got in a fight with a kid the other day, and the teacher didn't, t- like, see it. So, like, I really don't know whether or not to give him the $100 or if I should, like, hold out another month. Well, let well, me tell you this. What lesson are you teaching him? Yeah. You, know? you, you better pay him the $100 because he has bribed his teacher with $50 not to send him to the principal's office. <laughs> so That actually is probably... <laughs> I mean, I'm tempted to, like, teach the kindergartner how to, like, go to confession already. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he's a Catholic, huh? And how old are kindergartners uh, these days? Irish and Catholic, so... Irish and Catholic. Rough on both. Yeah, wow. Uh, how old is <laughs> kindergartners now? Uh, he's five. He's actually the youngest in his class, which I think is probably most of the problem. He's but. youngest in his class or oldest in his class? The youngest. He's, so what kind of rambunctious like he, behavior is he getting into? Like um, swinging his lunchbox and hitting his classmates in the lunch line. And then, like, when he gets in trouble and has to go sit by himself, he just, like, sits there and laughs obnoxiously. And then... Um, he was taking his buddy's shoes, and they were playing football with him in the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, like, refused to, like, do his schoolwork. And on the same day, like, of this, sh- like, football shoe incident, he uh, was, like, playing Frogger in the classroom instead of doing his coursework. Is his name Dylan? <laughs> No, it's Wyatt. Oh, okay. Wyatt. Well, Wyatt also sounds like a kid who'd yeah, be doing sounds this. sounds like an outlaw to me. You should have thought about it before you named your kid Wyatt. I hate to tell you, Amber. I mean, we, we kind of named him after Wyatt Earp, so I guess we did kind of earn it. I mean, his dad <laughs> is also a redhead, so I mean, I really did it in. So, okay, this doesn't sound <laughs> that bad. What kind of cupcake kindergarten are you sending them to? Yeah, and I'll say this. In defense of Wyatt, he's playing football with shoes. That kind of makes sense. If you think a foot and a ball, a shoe is the closest thing to a football if you're thinking about it, you know, yeah, logically. So I, I, I could see that. And also, I mean, 
He sounds like he's kind of other students got to be laughing. Yeah. You know, he's kind of the he's got to be the class clown is what it sounds like. And Char and Charlie's well, proven I, you can make a living off of being the class clown. Sure can. Well, I think he actually is picked on a little bit because I think they call him a baby. He's come home a couple of times, like saying like the kids don't like to play with him and they like to call him a baby. So um, I feel it's like well, a conflicting kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Well, you know what, though? He was a little shithead when he was, like, in daycare. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was one of the parents that I, would like, kind of wanted the other kids to, like, pick on him for a chance. Like, there for a while, there was this little kid named Samson. And it was literally, we had to, like, ingrain this in his head. Like, it was his mantra, like, do not hit Samson. And he would just, like, sit in his car seat on the way to daycare. And he would just tell himself, do not hit Samson. Do not hit Samson. And, like, he would go, and it would be like he'd be wrestling with his own thoughts of whether or not to hit this kid or not. And he would just tell himself, do not hit Samson. And then he'd go and plow the kid into the wall. Well, you didn't say anything about plowing. So, yeah, you said I hit. Mean, he is obeying. <laughs> he was following the rules. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of gray area in that <laughs> affirmation you gave him. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean... In no way, shape, or form are Charlie and I behavior specialists here. Um, but, again, you went to school, I imagine. Did you go to kindergarten as well? I mean, I did, but it was back in the day when kindergarten was a half a day, not a whole day. Yeah, well, one, there you go. You like, didn't learn a whole day. Pretty fucking boring, if you ask me, school is. So... Do schoolwork or yeah, play football with a shoe. To read already. What'd you say? So he's in kindergarten. It's like the first week of school he didn't even know how to write his name and they're already teaching him how to read. Does he know how to write his name yet? Now he does. Now he does. We gotten enough we my husband and I got in enough trouble with the kindergartner teacher with the kindergarten teacher, like it's in paper tome. He needs to learn how to write his name. So then we had to like, sorry, buddy, you can't go play in the mud. We have to learn how to write your name. Isn't that their job, though? <laughs> yeah, what the heck? Like, what are you? That's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Um, dang. So yeah, Wyatt is Wyatt an only child? No, he has a little brother. Uh, and is you the same way a, with the little a brother? A year and a half. Is he the same way oh, with the little way brother? Worse. He's way worse. Wow. What was he, his... like, whacked his brother in the head with sticks. I mean, I know this is, like, fairly normal, but I was, like, the good child, so I was the one that didn't like getting in trouble. So for me, I'm just like, I don't know how to handle him because I was the good kid afraid of getting in trouble, and I am paying penance for my husband's raising. Well, I was going to say, I mean... I don't want to put this all on your kid. You did choose your husband. And mm -hmm. I think you may or may not have known you were going to get a 50-50 shot on someone like your husband, which it sounds like he was also rambunctious, and someone like you who was kind yeah. of a goody two-shoes. I wasn't a goody two-shoes. I just... I got I got in trouble for my brother getting in trouble because I was the older one. Well, so it's like I don't need to get in trouble myself. I get in enough trouble for him getting in trouble. Well, and how did your uh, what's your brother doing these days? Um, well, actually, um, my brother um, he he passed away like fifteen oh. years ago. So oh, I'm sorry about that. No, it's okay. No, it's okay. It's and it, accidents happen. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. But well, no, that's no. Don't worry about it. It's he, let me tell you, he's in a much better place than down here on Earth, dealing with all the nonsense we have to deal with. Yeah, there's no shortage of nonsense here. He's not gonna get a lunchbox to the lunchbox to the noggin, you know, anymore. No. So. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, I mean honestly, I think he's he's got enough of my brother's not like foolishness i come from a i'm a little bit of a josher but my grandpa could really put it to you so i mean it is i guess 
partially me. It is genetic, 50-50, right? Could run in the blood. All right. Well, so you got a Hellraiser Wyatt, and you don't know what to do with him. So what does he like to do? You've told us a bunch of stuff that he doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to read and write. He doesn't want to go to school. What does he like to do? Um, Ride tractors, play with Legos, Hot Wheels, ride horses, play with cows. We live on a farm. Sounds so like uh, everything outside. A kid. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like he's he just uh, imagine having all of that at your disposal, the fun stuff, and then having to go sitting in a classroom for a whole day. It's kind of tough. I know, but it's like we didn't we didn't move to the school district we're in because we wanted to be in the school district. It just happened to be like we had animals, and it was like tough pickings when we moved during COVID. I was like, ah, this is available. Okay, great. They have a good school. Let's go. And it's like, heaven forbid, he like try his shoes wrong. They're oh. a little picky. Oh, they're picky. So maybe you think he's he's at home. He's amongst the animals at the farm. He's used to one way of living. And then all of a sudden they start pretending like the way you tie your shoes is actually important. So you think maybe it's a school's problem? I don't know. I mean, I just felt like, heck, it's Texas. Like, they raise, like, rough and rowdy kids that, like, run around wanting to play baseball and football all the time. But now that's just, like, they tend to be a little bit more particular than I thought they would be. I mean, I grew up in the Midwest. It's like they're just typically happy that in Missouri, like, they're happy that you show up with shoes on your feet and you're there to learn. So it's – I just – I guess I just guessed this area wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that a lot of times kids grow out of this stuff. And I I think to answer your first question, you should probably pay him the hundo. (laughs) Uh, He does have to pay some people (laughs) off. That's for sure. Yep. Uh, What is he going to buy with that money, you think? More Legos? A chicken? Well, 100 bucks doesn't go far with Legos these days, Charlie. it, It depends on who influences him. Well, who would if, be influencing him? Me, it, well, if it were me, I would tell him he needs to put it in his piggy bank. If it were his dad, he and his dad would be figuring out how to, like, buy some antique truck really cheap to, like, put it together. Yeah. Like, they went, he had this big old dream for, like, this 1970s model Ford put a, to drive around the farm. Well, it sounds like he's got a lot of admiration for his dad. Yeah, what does his dad think about all this? Um, I don't know. Some ways I think he thinks it's funny because it's fairly tame to what he did. Like his, my husband got kicked out of daycare in, in like a week. Yeah, All right. I mean, so I think he finds it kind of comical. Yeah. yeah. So here's what you, I not, I would start working on the husband here. I'd start working on his dad and saying, <laughs> all right. Yes, you could think it's funny when we're alone and uh, all that, but in front of them, you got to start putting the foot down and letting them know that that's not okay. Because he looks up to him, I imagine. He does. I mean, Granta, like my my husband, he's really great. And you know, when I like kind of give him the look, like, come on, like I can't be the bad parent all the time. Like he helps. It's like, you know, you, like the dad just has to give like the disappointed look and it's like the kid kind of knows like, oh, I kind of messed up. But, but I just, I think he's just preoccupied with horses and football. Too yeah. Much. I mean, he sounds like a kid. Yeah. <laughs> he sounds like a I mean, is he the worst one in the class? Yes. Oh, <laughs> not even a hesitation there. But you got to remember as, no. as... <laughs> As my buddy William Joel once said, <laughs> we didn't start the fire. It's always been burning since the world's yeah. been turning. Well, I, even... <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> I have to say, so my husband actually figured this out, that he was probably the worst one, I think, possibly in the entire kindergarten. Because the other day we actually had, like, we instead of sending him to after school care, like, my husband had to go pick him up in the car line. And he didn't have, like, the name tag you're supposed to put on the dash. So he rolls the window down, and it's the gym teacher that, like, checks the kids out. 
And my husband just goes, I'm here to pick up Wyatt. And the teacher goes, Wyatt, as in like Miss Carson's class, Wyatt. And my husband goes, yeah. And he goes, boy, he's a handful. <laughs> and I go, oh. Now, I will have to say that <laughs> kids who are handfuls as kids go up to be the adults that end up paving their own path, in my opinion. So it's not always bad. Then it doesn't become someone who uh, takes, you know, shit from anybody once he gets older, which can be a good positive trait to have. Yeah, he could be a real good paver one day. Construction. Well, he could end up like you guys, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, he could find himself in a bar on a Monday through uh, Thursday just drinking and talking to people. That could be it. You ever you ever think about uh, t- tiring the boy out before uh, school? You know, wake him up at 5 a.m. and say, go run around with the chickens? Yeah, give him more chores. Yeah. yeah have him- no, I mean, I, I don't do it in first thing in the morning, but when he really gets, like, rambunctious on the weekends, I do make him. We we pre, we'd ask him to pretend that he was Sonic and and have him run laps around the house. <laughs> That's and a good idea. We're actually doing it for punishment. Yeah, I I think you have him go outside and chase a chicken every morning before school. Tire him out. Get him. You know, get those endorphins going. He's feeling uh, you know, a little bit more chill, a little bit more relaxed. I think you just got to run him. Kids are a lot like dogs. You just got to take them on a walk. I don't oh, have any so kids, by the no, way. I'm divorced, I, 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 so. Well, I, I know that, Charlie. I was trying not to bring that up, but you did. <laughs> Usually Miles does. Finally, I wasn't the one. <laughs> he did it himself. I did. Um, I, you have any fi- – I mean, is that your final piece of advice for Charlie? Yeah, just just run them, you know? Get out there, run them, get the ATV yeah. going them, have them run by, beside the ATV, you know, get them tired out, you know? I guess. Yeah. Just as long as I don't get turned in for, like, child abuse. No. No. He, no he's run- I didn't he, tell you to he, fix him. <laughs> I mean, you know? It's, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's called playing outside, not whatever you were saying. Yeah. Playing well, out- I mean, that is the beauty of living out in the country. You have, like, a half-mile-long driveway with, like, no one else around except for cotton fields and pastures. So I guess no one would see unless he, like, starts narking on us at school. I mean, no. you're not. It's not like you're making him run. It sounds like he wants to run. He wants to be Sonic. <laughs> Just be Sonic, okay? Yeah. Just be Sonic. Well, I mean, I think this is probably the best advice we can get. We can give yeah. you. You called into a podcast of two guys without kids, drinking at a bar on a Thursday. You know? Yeah. Um, I would- well, I will say. I will say, so when we lived in Illinois, which, by the way, we are really glad to no longer be considered fibs. Yeah, I'd be glad about that, too. But <laughs> um, we used to, like, go places, like, to bar and grills, like, in the middle of the week. And even when he was a toddler, we'd, like, belly up to the bar, and they would just, like, serve him apple juice, you know, from a glass, and he'd be sitting there with the regulars like he just belongs there. Down here, they're a little bit more particular about that. Like, the first time that he got kicked out of the bar area, <laughs> he actually threw a fit. <laughs> okay, well, it sounds like he's just a fish out of water. Right yeah. Now. I think you, you got to head back north, <laughs> get back to the homeland, and uh, I think that's what it is. Come he's to Wisconsin. Out of water. Yeah, there's five kids sitting at the bar looking at me here, you know? <laughs> Well, the last time I actually went up that way a couple of weeks ago for a work meeting, I actually drove, like, 10 hours out of the way just to get up to, like, New Glarus to, like, bootleg beer down here. Oh, there so, you go. There you go. Don't tell anyone else that. <laughs> they will freak out on you and have you arrested. They've yeah. done it before, so. But no, my, co- my co-workers were throwing money at me to throw in some for them, I, too. I'm not saying that you're wrong, but they don't like that. They don't want you doing that. I they like that will, ambition. They like will that. throw the book at you. They don't want people drinking their beer, so they will uh, arrest you, and especially if you're selling it outside of Wisconsin. I like that side hustle you got there. You come to Wisconsin anytime, we'll load you up on the beer, all right? <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, we're we going back up to my parents. It's a 12 hour drive for Christmas. And we are, my husband and I are dumping the kids off for like a couple of days so we can oh. sneak back up there and meander for a bit just to experience the wonderful, clean, fresh, beautiful blue skies of Wisconsin. I we love, love that. Wisconsin. Just, well, yeah. We Especially love you going here to too. We love going to Hayward. Oh, Hayward's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Get up there for the Berkey Biner mm-hmm. in the winter. Lumberjack games. Lumberjack festival, the whole deal. Uh, how do your folks feel when, oh, you, yeah. when you dump that little Hellraiser off at their place for a few days? Well, they used to love it. Now I, it's they're more in it for our youngest. <laughs> the <laughs> They've given up on Wyatt already? <laughs> I mean, they love him dearly, but they're just like, here you go. And the other one, they're just like, oh, come here and give me more snuggle. Yeah, Charlie, right. I think what we need to do is you send uh, you send Wyatt up north. Charlie and I will play daddy daycare for a week. We'll, we'll straighten them right up. We'll get him uh, back behaving well, and then we'll send him back, and uh, he'll be uh, a lot less to handle when Charlie and I teach him some good values here up, up north. What do you think, Charlie? You think we'd do a good daddy daycare? Yeah, I, Miles, I think you'll do a great daddy daycare. I think that's a phenomenal thing for you and Ann, you know. <laughs> and you. Yeah, you and Ann. I don't know. They, they might realize that they're just – they're just set in life to be dog parents, not kid parents. Yeah, After she, him, she's saying that it, why it may ruin our oh. ambition to have kids <laughs> is what she's saying. Uh, it's a phase, you know. Yeah, it's, it's just, just a, a phase. He'll he'll grow out of it. He's just protecting himself. He's the he's the smallest. Uh, you know, he's the, he's the runt, is what it sounds like. The youngest one in that. He's just protecting. So um, I think he'll grow out of it, you know. Hello, how you doing? It's it's all phase. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Stay uh, stay strong, mom. So. You got it. You do. Uh, and if all else fails, it sounds like the bribing was at least working a little bit. So I would just keep bribing him. Maybe yeah. don't. You got a little ambitious with a hundred bucks. A five year old doesn't know the difference between you know two bucks and tw- and twenty. So I would maybe just bring that number down a little bit, but. Other yeah. than that, I think well, you're doing good. I, Stay strong. I mean, like, the first number that came out of my mouth was 100, and then a couple of weeks later, I, like, mentioned, like, oh, yeah, 50 bucks, honey. And he goes, no, Mom, that's not what you said. <laughs> He's yeah, holding you, you accountable. You, you dug yourself a hole. You did. He is. He is. Well, you he just, just got to raise it a little bit. Get Just raise the timeline. Two months, $110. He doesn't know go. increments of in math yet, so. He can barely write his own name. Well, so. no, they're teaching him how to read numbers too. <laughs> oh no! You better start no. getting these negotiations yes. down before he figures out math. Okay, lock that deal in now. <laughs> oh lordy! Yeah, that's that delusional laugh you got going. <laughs> we uh, we feel you here. It sounds like Wyatt sitting in the corner laughing to himself. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Well, we appreciate you calling in. Hopefully, we helped you out a little bit. Um, But again, stay strong out there. Well, I also have a buy sell trade. Don't. How much you want for Wyatt? (laughs) No, I'm not selling my child. Okay, we'll trade. I mean, I gave birth to him for Pete's sake. I just paid him off like when he was a year and a half old. That's true. The investment is still. You've got too much in that investment to sell it off right now. All right. What do you want to buy, sell, or trade? We inherited my father-in-law's tractor, so it's a, like, 70s model 5000 series, uh, row crop series tractor. Wow. And it just, he got it on an auction many, many years ago just because he needed a tractor because the other one was broken down and, like, you couldn't really get parts for it anymore. Sure. So we just got it, but it really wasn't what we needed. So since we inherited it now, we're just like, we really don't need it. We're trying to sell it or we want to sell it, we still have to get it down here from the farm in Oklahoma. But if anybody wants one, I have no idea how many hours are on it. Okay. What's the, your price on it? All the, 
I asked my husband how much he thought we could get for it, and he thought about five thousand. Five thousand bucks? Shoot, I bet you could get a little more than that, especially with parts these days. Well, and... well, the only problem is, is like it used to have a generator on it, mm-hmm. and we it never worked, and so we replaced it with an alternator, and I. It still doesn't work. Oh, so in the middle of doing it, like it just (laughs) and so you always have to have jumper cables or a battery starter nearby. Got it. Buyer beware, I guess. Buyer beware. Got a five thousand dollar tractor. Tweet hunk of metal. Tweet us a picture to tweet a picture to the bellied up pod. (laughs) We'll we'll retweet it for you. Try to get that thing gone. Sweet. Yeah, because we're trying to get one that will actually work for us. Because we need one that has an inloader bucket, and that one's just not, the frame's not designed for one. So, gotcha. We're just a young couple trying to do things frugally, starting small. I love it. Love love the ambition. Well, good luck with Wyatt. Good luck with the tractor. Send us a pic. We'll retweet it. We'll get you some money there, uh, cooking and whatnot. Well, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Don't tell your folks I said hi. And watch for deer, okay? And make sure Wyatt watches for him when he's playing Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> we will, thanks. All right, oh, bye-bye. Uh, what were you like as a kid, Charlie? I was kind of honestly quiet yeah. and just trying to behave. You were a little shithead, weren't well, you? Well, I knew the line, though. I was good at towing the line and then reeling it back when I could sense I was actually going to get in trouble. So Got I didn't it. spend too much time in the principal's office. What do you so. think? What do you think? Uh, I think Wyatt's going to turn out to be an entrepreneur. I think, yeah, I, think I, I felt that as well. He's got a creative mind. He he's he knows just, the value of a hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, kind of his own uh, dude. You know, he he's not afraid to stand out. Yeah. I think he'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, should we take another one? Let's do it. Welcome to the Belly Up Podcast. Who are we chatting with? Hey, my name is Megan. Hey, Megan. How you doing? Hey. Oh, well, you know, it's been kind of a rough morning, but can't what ha- complain otherwise. What oh, happened? Oh, no. Yeah, so um, my boyfriend and I, we woke up this morning and... Our dirt bike was stolen out of our front yard. <laughs> they stole a dirt bike out of your front yard? Yeah. What was it doing out in the front yard and not in the garage? Well, so... What we are you, Megan's dad? have, like, a mother-in-law. Jeez <laughs> Louise. <laughs> you know, look at him no, shaming no. you, Megan. No, I just want to oh, get the label Oh, God. I... <laughs> no. So um, we live in a mother-in-law suite, like in the um, in this guy's backyard, and so we don't have a whole lot of space to store things. So um, it's a street legal dirt bike that my boyfriend has, so we just parked it on the street. Well, had. Um, <laughs> yeah, we. <laughs> what 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 kind of a bike are we now. talking I'm about? So <laughs> Uh, I don't know. What kind of bike is it? Yamaha. It's a Yamaha TTR. Yamaha TTR? Yeah. What's the license plate number? Oh, boy. What is it? 1J2831. All right. Well, we will contact the authorities as soon as we get off this call and see what we can do for you. <laughs> Folks, keep your eyes on the road. If you see a Yamaha JTTR, 143868, what was it again? Yeah, well, you got it. Yeah, just rewind the pod. <laughs> you'll, you'll hear it again. So, okay. Well, so- what I want to know is how would y'all in the Midwest deal with this situation? Well, first my head goes to, you know, they'll return it. They're probably just yeah. walking around, a <laughs> few too many drinks, said, oh, maybe we should steal this. <laughs> or they maybe their car ran out of gas. They still got to get to the bar, so they hop on a, the nearest bike. They'll Once they're done having a few beers, they'll bring yeah. it back. Yeah. I By wish the way, I had that much humanity. <laughs> well, you asked what the Midwest would do. Either that, or you know. I know. I know. Either I that, know. or you should know that it's uh, Rick and Tammy's son Scott 
who, uh, you know, he's, uh, a, he's, he's, he's a little bit of a five-finger discount type of kid. He probably just ch- took it for a joy ride. You give them a call, and they'll bring it right back is probably what you would do at the yeah. Midwest. Well, where are you guys? Uh, uh, we're currently in Seattle. Oh, you're in Seattle. Oh, so like some hipster coffee yeah. guy took it. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's such a bummer. I mean, talk about you get your bike stolen. Good luck sleeping tonight. You're going to be sleepless in Seattle. I can tell you that. Oh. Much. Hey, hey, look at that. God. Well, we just moved here, too, like a couple weeks ago. So it's like, oh. Welcome, welcome to Seattle. I should have just stayed in Minnesota. Yeah, well, yeah, that wouldn't have happened, Minnesota. They would have at least knocked and asked, you know, if they could exactly. steal your motorcycle. Well, well, either that or they would have taken it, tuned it up for you, and brought it back and said, ah, I saw it was leaking right. oil. So I that could have been it. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys have insurance? Yeah. No, we, like, just bought it, what, like two weeks ago, and... Stolen yeah. from your home, though, so maybe your homeowner's insurance or your renter's insurance will cover it. Oh, yeah, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, those insurance companies spend all day screwing you, and uh, you might as well, you know, screw it back at them. Um, hey, yeah. worth a try, well, yeah. So let's talk through what you've done since you saw the bike was stolen. First, you said we okay. have to call into the Bellied Up podcast. Those guys will be able to help us out. Exactly, that is number one. Exactly, and I, I knew, I knew y'all would help. Yeah. yeah. So, what are you going to do immediately after this call? Well, so we first we went to the police station. We did the police report. Um, we knocked on some neighbors' houses. They have the ring cameras, and we actually got footage of the truck stealing oh, the bike so wow. we kind of have was an a whole idea. operation this wasn't just uh oh, one we're going off. full detective let me guess it was i've been Ford. waiting my whole life for this <laughs> what kind of a truck so, stole what, what it kind of car was it it was a older single cab truck with a looked like a long bed like an eight foot bed rust colored yeah, rust colored. Like you don't say a rust a rust colored truck yeah. with a dirt bike in the back. <laughs> yeah, you weren't the first victim today, or they thought it was cleanup week, uh, and they <laughs> yeah. yeah, didn't look like it was their first rodeo either. They just grabbed it and went on. It took about twenty seconds, maybe. Wow, okay. did you guys get any uh, get any plates? No, the video isn't that clear, but we're going to go and see if we got a, you know, any other help from some of the other neighbors because we saw the direction it was going. So, you know, hope isn't lost yet. No, you guys, you have some sticky feet today because you're a couple of gum shoes. Whoa, good one, Charlie. Um, <laughs> Miles, don't give me that look. Um, okay, so you called the police. You know roughly the car. Uh, have you asked, uh, you know what I would do? I would do uh, some flyering action. Uh, take a picture of your bike and go, oh, go yeah. put it around in every uh, every bar that you think that truck would frequent. You know? Cause, oh, yeah. Because if that truck's yeah. frequenting well, that. Well, we did that. There was like what? The, um, what kind of websites were those? We got, like, it on, we got it on, post on Nextdoor. We got it on uh, this West Seattle blog. Um. You know, ton of Facebook groups and stuff yeah. like that. It does not look. It's unfortunate, but I'm not uh not alone in this situation. It looks like there's like four or five stolen in the last week. So okay, Dang. we have ourselves a full blown uh, conspiracy. Yeah, here, Charlie. this could be a Rico yeah. case. Yeah, the dirt bike bandits yeah. strike again. Yeah. <laughs> dirt bike did they yeah. leave like a signal of any sort? Did they, uh, you know, did they like the sticky bandits in Home Alone? They yeah, they leave a calling card. Or the wet bandits? Yeah. Did they leave they, a calling card? They didn't leave the water running, but uh, they did leave <laughs> a piece of the fairing on the ground. So okay, you have a shred of evidence then. Shred of evidence. So. Uh, do you have any bike dealers in the neighborhood? Because they might be trying to resell them to them. You yeah, know. have you checked Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, all those? Is it listed on there? No, not listed yet. Been been going through, but I figure, you know, they might be not quite dumb enough to post it yet. You would be surprised. Yeah, I'm going to keep my eyes on it, that's for sure. 
Well, I mean, honestly, though, if you would have kept your eye on it uh, a little bit sooner, it wouldn't have to do all oh. this leg work now. Yeah. Did you? Did... Oh, Miles, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> was was this uh was this dirt bike? Now it's street legal, so it had a key situation, right? No, uh, no key. This isn't but, a key uh, one. Dirt bike, but it's a... Yeah, no keys. It was just like a conversion to street legal, so pretty much just slap the headlight on and, and some turn signals. Got it. And uh, that's about it. Okay, yeah. okay. One of those deals. Oh, man, that's going to make it tougher. So are you guys riding the bus now? Yeah. Is this your only form of transportation, or what? what's that situation? Uh, no, so um, we have my car still, but... Um, he he really loves his bike and well, yeah, you that... know <laughs> he he doesn't want to be driving around in my car anymore <laughs> okay you know what we're gonna do i have a great plan okay miles you go your plan i'll go All my right, plan. Right. my plan is you're gonna have to go to the cardboard store get a cardboard cutout of your bike you're gonna set it up again <sighs> in the same spot that you had it before okay. If I know these thieves like I think they do, they can't pass up on a good uh, Yamaha. They're going to be like, God, they got another one already. They're going to go up, and as soon as they get close to realizing it's just a cardboard cutout, boom, have the FBI there ready to arrest them. You know what? If you if you can't get a hold of the FBI, I got a thing that might just make it even better. So you know um, Miles, same idea, okay? But you guys ever trap a squirrel with a with a box? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Raccoons, yeah. yeah. Raccoons. You're gonna need a big box. You're gonna need a really big box <laughs> and <laughs> and a really big tree branch. <laughs> Get the tree okay. branch <laughs> propped up at about uh you know a 45 degree angle, tall enough so they're not gonna notice the box. Yeah. Or the branch. Okay. And then put that bike right underneath and then have well, a rope. Don't have the bike. Or no, put the cardboard bike oh, okay. gotcha. right underneath. And then you guys wait inside, tie a rope to the tree branch and drag that around the house or in the house. Make sure it doesn't get jammed up in the door. Then when they come by and they're starting to snoop around, right before they realize that this is a 2D, not a 3D bike, <laughs> Pull the branch, you uh, got them. You got to make sure you jump on top of the box. Though. Absolutely have to jump on the box. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think they got a good blueprint, blueprint for that one in Scooby-Doo, too. So I think yeah. that's yeah. a good reference. Watch your Scooby-Doos. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's where Charlie and I get a lot of our detective advice from, Scooby-Doo. Uh, Very hey, true. Hey, it works every oh, like time, that. though, yeah. Yeah, never seen them fail. That is true. Um, <laughs> You know, another thing you could do, actually, this might be a serious thing. Um, type in, go on Twitter, type in the exact model of the bike and see if they're, uh, they're trying to sell it on Twitter. Some people sell stuff on Twitter, All right, and, but, but just, yeah, go to the latest version here. Actually, you want to tell with it. I'm going to do it right now. All right, you do that. Um, they're also, you, I mean, I think the decoy bike, so you're going to have to buy another bike, unfortunately. I don't know if the cardboard cutout yeah. is gonna uh, cut it. See what I did there? Yeah, did especially um, with all the rain here. Yeah. yeah. No, here's what you do. You don't want to put more of your own stuff in harm's way. So you got to go to your neighbor who has a dirt bike. Tell him to put it out there, and that you'll keep an eye on it. And then when they come to steal that one, you'll get them. But just make sure you. Yeah. Keep there an we eye go. On okay. It. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the model. Gotta actually keep an eye on it this time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Give me the model <laughs> one more time. Yamaha, what? I forget. It's a TTR two thirty. TTR two three zero. Okay. Yeah. All right, we're looking. Let's see. Oh, that is a sweet that freaking is, bike. Is it a 2023 or what year is it? Um, that no, is. It, it, it was an 06. No 06. It was, it was a janky bike. Don't yeah. say that about your bike. <laughs> yeah. Bike. There's nothing nothing I'm nah, seeing nothing popping up yet. All right. We'll keep an eye. We'll keep one eye yeah. on Twitter. Yep. 
we'll keep an eye out for you, and we hope all the folks out there. What color was it, by the way? It's blue. Oh, this one's blue too. God, that's a sexy. Oh, movie. maybe we got. Well, no, if you're in the dang, market, maybe they upgraded it for me. Yeah, well, if you're in the market for a 2023 version that's blue, there's one selling one online. Yeah, you can go there since you don't have one anymore. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Well, good luck with that. Uh, you know, oh, oh, go, yeah. One more good idea. Miles is full of them today. We do a lot of buy, sell, and trades here on the Belly Up Podcast. You guys, it sounds hey. like you're sounds like you're looking to buy a Yamaha twenty oh six. Is that what it was? A Yamaha TTR TTR two three zero two thirty. You're looking to In buy. The market, boy. Yeah. yeah. And I imagine yeah. that these guys are also listeners of this podcast. They might try and sell it to you back. Yeah, they could. We got right. a and lot see of somebody coming in to sell. Yeah. What if next call someone yeah. calls in and says, "Hey, we're looking to sell yeah. a Yamaha." <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, is we're only in Seattle for three months, so he was just going to buy it for the three months and then sell it. So it's like, come on, guys, just bring it back the three months, and then you know after that, you guys can have it. Yeah. yeah, and no, let them steal it again so you can still claim it on your insurance. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just to pay in taxes. So smart. we're going to make it a little more tough on them, yeah, see if they can improve their skills. Well, if anyone out there has got a 2006 blue Yamaha TR230 looking to sell, TT two thirty. We're looking for so, someone to buy. We got one. So and uh, it, you yeah, guys, yeah. you guys are probably in the market to buy a bike lock. So. <laughs> yep. Adam. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Too, yeah. Soon. Yeah. Too soon. Too <laughs> soon. Next time Maybe you got to uh, take the front tire off. off. Yeah. yeah, take yeah. the front tire yeah. off <laughs> and the seat. The seat. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and if you really want to get them, put some like petroleum jelly on the other side of the handlebars that they can't see. Nothing will piss a thief off more when they put their hands on it and they get all gummy. Yeah. It's just, no one wants that. Yeah. That might be enough. They got the stick fingers. Yeah. Yeah, the, the sticky bandits would yep. be the slippery bandits. Yep. Sticky bandits. <laughs> all right. Well, you know, we hope that the uh, that the law enforcement went out in this one and they find that bike returned safely. You guys invest in a bike lock and uh, good luck. Yeah, find that big cardboard right. box. Thank you guys. Yeah, All right. Yeah, yeah, we'll be on the lookout. Good, good on <laughs> you guys. guys. Yep. yep. Try, and, try and get some yeah. sleep tonight, though. Don't be up too late. Oh, we'll, see. we'll We'll do our best. Okay. All right. <laughs> Real good. Oh, uh, appreciate it. Have Watch for deer. Yeah, I feel bad for a miles. I know. You really had to do two sleepless in Seattle references. <laughs> the first one wasn't good enough for you. You know, these people are in mourning, and you're over here making the worst dad jokes I, you can I, imagine. Charlie, I can't take anything serious. You know that. About I do me. know it's that. It's tough. That's how I cope, you know. Felt bad for him. Cope with a few jokes. Yeah. No um, coping method. Different copes for different folks, Different Charlie. copes for different folks. That's why I always say, my. Um... It's been another great episode. Of yeah, the I think Dog. actually that was the, the cardboard advice. I think that by was both of us legit. was yeah. pretty up there. Yeah, you had the cardboard cutout. I had the cardboard box. You know. Well, and honestly, if I was going to go steal that bike and there was a big cardboard box with a stick, I'd be like, "There's no way that they're actually going to trap me in this. This no. seems too ridiculous." So yeah, I actually, I think it would get me. You'd be like, "I can get in, like, get out of that quick enough." It's just cardboard. You yeah. Know? Right. Just that ride right out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nine one one. There is a cardboard box driving down the road. <laughs> we need some assistance. <laughs> uh, that, would <laughs> that would be good. That would be good. All in a good day's work here on the Bellied Up Podcast, folks. Yep. Miles, we did it again. What do you say? I said that was good, Charlie. I said you always tip your bartender. Appreciate everyone listening for another good episode. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you in the next one. See you real quick. Love you guys. Bye-bye.